Good afternoon, everybody. So, um, welcome for this uh, panel um, dedicated to uh, the subject of Holocaust denial, BDS, anti Israel activities on college campuses, um, the challenges. So, we have uh, with us um, guests from uh, Israel but also from around the world. Um, together with us, Ido Daniel from Israel, Yosef Tarshish, also from Israel. Um, Evan Gotes Gotesman from the U.S. with uh, Liat Diner Shodiker, also from the U.S. Andrea Nisnevich from Argentina. And uh, uh, last but not least, we have Ashley Dens Dencham from Australia and uh, Dean Levitan from Australia. Um, what we are going to do now is um, each of them will uh, present themselves a little bit personally, but also uh, their organizations they represent uh, shortly, because as you can see, we have a, a large panel. Uh, we try to cover um, this subject from a different point of view, but also from, uh, from different places uh, in the world. Um, afterwards, we're going to watch um, two short videos uh, representing a, maybe a phenomena that is uh, uh, happening today in um, um, in many uh, campuses uh, in, uh, in the world. And afterwards, we will uh, also proceed to uh, questions and, uh, and answers. So, Ido, please. I'm the first one to start. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Shalom. Welcome. Um, my name is Ido. I'm 29. I'm the director of uh, ISCA, which stands for Israeli Students Combating Antisemitism. Um, it's an initiative uh, hosted by the National Union of Israeli Students, um, and today it is uh, it was founded in the 2011, and uh, um, today it's the largest initiative uh, of its kind uh, in the world in the field of combating uh, online anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. We're active in uh, 17 different languages, have a, a large monitoring team. We also engage in uh, content affiliated platforms, um, Wikipedia, other places. Uh, uh, my students receive scholarship, scholarship for their activity online. Um, and we have a variety of uh, findings, a uh, variety of uh, 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 cases that we, uh, uh, that we find. Uh, just to give you a, a, a glimpse, we, um, we've we dealt with, in the past year, 2016, more than uh, uh, three, uh, more than 30,000 cases of anti-Semitism online. Facebook posts, tweets, um, YouTube videos, etc. Um, also active in Instagram, uh, in Russian, in Fikontakte. Uh, uh, um, I haven't pronounced it correctly, sorry, for uh, the Russian speakers. I don't know how to. Uh, so we're also uh, active there, and uh, in Argentina, for example, a, a, a website called uh, Taringa, another place. Uh, so we deal with a lot of issues, a lot of platforms. Um, this is what I'm doing currently. I'm also um, do. This is the biggest project I'm running, um, but I think. Uh, well, I will start with maybe. Uh, I will say. Just one thing about our findings with ISCA. Um, we can see more and more uh, findings, findings and cases of issued, posted uh, by BDS uh, activists uh, that are completely anti-Semitic and not in this region anymore of uh, legitimate criticism of Israel. And of course, you probably uh, know the um, uh, the working definitions, we work with them as well. Uh, the 3D a, a, a test of Nathan Sharansky and, of course, the a, a working definition of anti-Semitism. Uh, I think I will speak here more uh, about other projects I've done uh, with an organization called What Israel. Um, when we started uh, sending 
uh, delegations of Israeli students. They paid for their own tickets. Uh, the organization was called uh, What Israel, as I mentioned. And um, we uh, visited campuses in the United Kingdom and in France twice, um, United, uh, United States and South Africa, of course. Uh, I've been a member of uh, uh, most of those delegations, so I can share some uh, experience. Uh, I think that's it. I, t I spoke too much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe can you... Okay. Can you hear me? This is much better. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Yosef Tashish. Uh, I'm uh, originally from the UK, just outside of London. I made Aliyah two and a half years ago, and I'm the chair of the World Union of Jewish Students. The World Union of Jewish Students is an umbrella association that supports independent Jewish student groups in more than 30 countries. Um, we're mainly active across Europe, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Latin America. Um, uh, but we also have activists in the United States and Canada as well. Um, we, my background is I was a student in Manchester. Um, I graduated in 2013. I was president of the Uni Union of Jewish Students of the UK and Ireland for a year. And after making Aliyah, I joined Wujus. Um, I, I think we'll get onto the discussions about, about the subject matter later, so I don't need to tell you about my, my specific um, so I don't know, experience in those areas, and we'll let the actual discussion unfold that way, and I'll pass on. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Evan Gottesman. Um, I'm a senior at Rutgers University in New Jersey, uh, the United States. Um, I'm 22 years old. I'm graduating in May, so if anyone here is hiring, please let me know. Um, I'm a member of the Hillel International Student Cabinet. Hillel International is a student, uh, Jewish student organization with over uh, 600 chapters in the United States, in Latin America, the former Soviet Union, Europe, um, and even in Israel. And we're a 24 student body with uh, students from around the world representing the interests of those students. I'm also a member of the uh, Young Leaders Council of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, which is a uh, 50, uh, 50 some odd uh, member organiza uh, organization with uh, different organizations uh, represented um, across the political religious spectrum from Americans for Shalom Akshav to Zionist Organization of America and Orthodox Union to the Union for Reform Judaism. And I'm also, my main work is as the Israel Affairs Chair at Rutgers University, which has the largest undergraduate student, Jewish student population in North America, over 6,500 Jewish students. And um, in that capacity, I plan Israel-related social, cultural, political events. Um, and I've also worked on Israel-related issues at the Israel Policy Forum in New York, which is a think tank advocacy group hybrid that is uh, committed to promoting the idea of a Jewish, democratic, and secure Israel. And I also teach sixth grade Hebrew school um, to a group of 11-year-olds about uh, Hebrew reading, modern state of Israel's history, and American Jewish history. And I'll uh, pass it on to Liat. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Liat. I'm also with the Hill International Student Cabinet. Um, a little bit of background on me. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and I went to Jewish day school my whole life there. It's a very strong, vibrant Jewish community. And in high school, I participated in a program called the Diller Teen Fellowship that takes Jewish students from many different cities around the world and brings you to do programming in Israel with our Israeli counterparts. Um, and I participated in that, and that actually led to teen trips through the Diller Teen Fellowship to Israel. Um, since coming to college, I've been really involved in the Jewish community. Um, both in building strong Jewish communities and also with pro-Israel advocacy. I've done so through being a leader of the conservative community at the University of Maryland. Um, I've done so through leading alternative break trips um, focused on social justice around the country through Maryland Hillel. Um, I've also been really involved in kind of an advisory committee we have at Maryland Hillel, which I think is very close to Rutgers and at the size of our Jewish community. So I work with other student leaders to advise the director of our Hillel and sit as a student representative of the board of directors of Maryland Hillel. I'm also on the national student board of J Street U, which is a pro-Israel, pro-peace um, organization that advocates for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Hi, my name is Andrea. I'm from Argentina, Rosario. and. In Argentina, we have a different way of university. Uh, we do not have campuses. 
I do not came from a university Jewish group or organization. I'm a political assessor in Rosario Council. I'm in human rights and education. I'm a high school teacher. I'm an activist, okay? In Rosario, we have a big phenomenon that is the public university, okay? At public univers university has a really big uh, characteristic that is full of politics, okay? All the national politics party are represent there, okay? We as SHU in Rosario doesn't have an organization. I'm part of one of the university organization and since there I could do a lot of things uh, from anti-Semitic uh, activities. Why I want to do this introduction about public university in Argentina, because many of those um, political party in the university are the representation of the national politics party, okay? And many of them are the ones who do activities, anti-Israel activities, okay? And we not only get a fight in front of them in the university, many times we get a fight in front of them in the street even. So as uh, we do not have a Jewish organization, it's really difficult because it's one plus one plus one, and maybe in, at the Keila uh, we can we can find another people interested in in talk about it or argue or have discussions in front of this big problem that we have nowadays. But it's not easy without an organization. But I want to I want to do that really tiny introduce about uh, universities in Argentina because it's completely different to Australia, uh, here in Israel, United States, or United Kingdom. My name is Ashley. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I uh, graduated in 2010 from Mount Scopus Memorial College and I then went on Schnatz Hakshara program to Israel for 10 months and I was living in Jerusalem for four months at uh, Hamachon Lamadre Chechul, which is just around the corner. And uh, after returning to Australia, I was a madrich at Habanim Draw, the, it's a socialist Zionist youth movement there for three years. And in 2012, I co-founded a secular humanistic Jewish congregation called Kehilat Kolenu. And for those of you who don't know what a humanistic Jewish congregation is, it's, it provides a non-theistic um, alternative to Jewish practice. And at the same time, on the other side of my life, I, I am very passionate about the environment and I studied plant science and geography at Monash University. And Monash University is Melbourne's largest uh, university and it's also home to, I would say, the largest Jewish um, student population. And it's actually named after a Jew, uh, Sir John Monash, who was a, a Jewish general about 100 years ago, so that's pretty cool. And while talking about my experiences at Monash University uh, today. Thanks, Ash. My name's Dean, I'm also from Melbourne, Australia. And similar to Ash, I graduated uh, from Mount Scopus College uh, in 2009, uh, also attended Monash University and graduated uh, my law degree earlier this year. Uh, I currently work as the campaigns director for an organisation called Stand Up, um, whose mission is, a, is effectively a Jewish commitment to a better world. So we're driven by, by our Jewish values um, and, our, and our Jewish history. Uh, we leverage and mobilise um, everything that the Jewish community has to offer towards helping um, a, a number of uh, community groups outside the Jewish community, including Aboriginal populations and refugee populations um, in Australia. So um, like Ash, I've got a, a, a unique insight into campus life in, in Australia uh, and, and the Jewish community in Australia, uh, but also come from a unique position because I understand the, the value and benefit of um, using our Jewish values for, for a greater cause. And, and I hope to speak to some of, some of those values today. Thank you very much. Um, so now we'll um, <coughs> watch two short um, movies that we can easily find on, on YouTube and uh, you will have to, um, to tell us.
We will watch a second video. Thank you. Thank you. So we've just seen two videos um, about two, two topics um, here we can see. Um, and uh, my first question to you is, uh, are those phenomena are uh, major problems or are they maybe we can say just side issues in the life of uh, Jewish students on campuses we will change a little bit the direction sometimes of the um, the conversation so Dean please if you can relate to that um, I've never seen any of those videos and they're obviously very concerning and troubling um, I think from an Australian perspective we come from what I think 
um, after hearing what everyone else says, um, a relatively unique standpoint because anti-Semitism on Australian campus uh, is, is certainly not widespread. Um, I think uh, I haven't spoken to or met anyone, any Jewish student who goes to my university who's ever experienced anti-Semitism. Uh, and so while um, I'm definitely uh, cognizant that it exists, um, I, 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 don't, I don't see it as a widespread problem and, I'm, and, I, and I am concerned of um, overstating the problem on campus. And I think one of the reasons why um, Australia is in, in a fortunate and unique position with this is because we really do um, value multiculturalism. It's very much embedded into the fabric of our society and anyone who is seen to be um, disrupting that fabric or breaking into that fabric is is the one who's usually ostracised from, um, from mainstream community. And although there are sometimes um, rare and isolated incidences of of anti-Semitism, they usually are relegated to the fringes and not many people pay them much respect. Uh, there are a number of groups, th there are a, f a couple of groups in Australia um, who, who um, do um, have an energised uh, uh, collective of anti-Semites and that is, they come from two sides. They can either come from the far right and these are neo-Nazi parties and again, we very rarely, if ever, see them on campus. Um, the one that's probably more common is from the far left, where we have socialist alliance or socialist alternative groups um, who um, make uh, blur the lines between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, and often um, and and often um, make uh, ensure that anti-Semitism um, does seep somewhat into the mainstream. But I will say that even then, those are rare and isolated incidences, and those groups are recognised as quite radical and, and, and on the fringes of mainstream um, campus uh, culture. So although those things are very, um, very concerning, uh, I, 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 I haven't seen any of that myself. And I think one of those things is owing to um, the, re the really valued multiculturalism on campus, especially um, in society, but especially on campus. I'll uh, just add to what Dean said. I tend, I tend to agree. Um, I'm not as popular as Dean, but I have a few friends and I also haven't experienced uh, any anti-Semitic events or uh, any of my friends have either. Um, but to elaborate, elaborate on those far left groups, um, they are quite prevalent on campus and often their leftist agenda extends far beyond Israel. Is the Marxist, anti-capitalist, anti-war anti, anti anywhere, anti-interventionist, and, and often a lot of the time the, the activities are based around that. Um, but when a conflict does flare up in Israel, obviously um, anti-Israel pro-Palestinian protests uh, do occur. And uh, I think generally that's consistent with their ideology. However, when it's uh, done to an extent which is disproportionate, that's when it, it blurs on the anti-Semitism. Anti and I think um, that definitely does happen. But at the same time, Australian, the Australian student psyche is very unique and I think perhaps different to UK and America and, and, and perhaps... Uh, um, in South America as well, in that uh, Australian students are quite apathetic and apolitical. They don't like to get involved uh, with student politics. They don't like to stand out. And a really interesting st statistic is that to win a Jewish, sorry, to win a student union in Monash University, you have to only get 2% of the student vote. 2%. And the reason why is because only 5,000 people actually vote. No one actually really cares about student politics, except for a few people who have nothing better to do, according to the Australian students. And to win it outright, you have to have 3% of the vote. So it's really nothing. It's actually quite easy to, to vote in Jewish uh, representatives on student unions, because only a few of us actually have to vote, and, and they're in positions of power. That just shows you that, that Australian students are embarrassed by, by the fact of people handing out flyers. Anti-Israel flyers, they tend to reject them. There was a, a group called a Socialist Alternative, they were actually subsequently banned at the university for being a bit too inflammatory. But they were looked down upon um, extremely by students because there is an Australian stereotype that Australians just want to go to the beach and drink a beer. And, and it's somewhat true for students. At the end of the day, anything that, that it, you know, influences them getting home on the bus to go home and have a relaxing afternoon, if that means someone's handing out a fly to them, it's, it's, it's you know, against that, that stereotype. Um, and it, it does sound funny, but it's very true, the fact that, that the 3% you need to, to vote in that, that union. Um, and so I'd actually say I'd be more scared to, to be um, in this leftist um, political groups than to say outright that I'm Jewish because, frankly, the word Jewish doesn't really matter to them. It's, we're integrated into society. We still, with that philosophy of being an Australian student, have a good time. As long as we're apolitical, then it doesn't actually really matter. Um, and just to emphasise the point even more, Australian students, um, recently there was the, the, the government was considering um, cutting the... Um, 
uni, uh, extending uni fees and uh, the student unions organized protests. And I think they had in my university, which has over 50,000 students, um, I think three buses went to the city to, to hold a protest. Um, so no one really protests. And, and the idea is that by, by being apolitical and not really caring that these political um, anti-Israel or BDS movements don't really gain much strength. Thank you. Um, I think that in Rosario, where I live, uh, it's not a major problem uh, because we are there, okay? Maybe it sounds like a superhero, but it's not. It's, it's really, if you are there talking with the people, okay, after somebody give a horrible uh, speech with lies, you gotta be there, not for talk direct, uh, directly with the anti-Israel activists, you gotta be there to talk with the guy that is next to. Okay, for example, in 2014, I was in the university and an anthropologist from La Plata came to give a, a conference about Gaza, the biggest jail, uh, the biggest jail in, uh, I, I don't remember the, yes, thank you, <laughs> open area prison, thank you. And he was talking about many things that I was completely sure it wasn't right, it wasn't that, it, that was lie. And suddenly he says, because Israel opened the gates of the repress uh, for, uh, because they want to the Palestine get drug. And uh, I raise my hand and I say, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not okay, but I think that in Israel, it's not, uh, Israel haven't repressed. And less and less near, the, near Gaza. And they tell me, where, where are you from? I'm from here, Argentina. No, 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 you came, somebody tell you that you gotta came here. And a lot of people tell me, please, please, get out of the room. L uh, leave us to, to finish the conference, then you can get inside and, and do your questions. Okay, I, I get up and get out of the, of the room. When I got out of the, of the room, a few students came with me and told me, I'm sorry, can you, can you explain us what's happening? What, What's happening there, inside, with that man? And what is it? I talked with those guys, and I don't know, it was, it was an amazing experience for me because after that, they start to ask me every time there was a problem here in Israel or bad news or, or something, and they understand there is another speech, okay? There's not one, one way of information, okay? And every time that I post something in Facebook or Twitter, they repost or retweet what I, what I say, okay? I'm, I do not have the absolutely true. I mean, and I think it's very important to know what is our goals, okay, in the universities. Uh, many times uh, we go to the decane, to the rector of the universities. They help us a lot. That's it. Uh, we gotta say they are really there when we want to do a denounce, but it's not enough. If you are in the moment that somebody is telling something wrong or that is not true about Israel and you don't stop or clarify what are they saying, the lie is in there. And um, people, if, if it's nobody clarify, people finish believing that that is true, okay? So I think it's not a major problem in Rosario University because people like me is talking every time with another person saying, what is really happening here in Israel. Andrea, before, before we continue, can you also relate to the second video? And also, we had the impression that in Australia there is not such a major problem, but also if, if you think that there is such an issue also of commemoration, that it became an issue to commemorate the, uh, the Shoah, the Holocaust. Is there such a thing in Argentina? No, we, we do not have problem with Shoah, remember. And we have problem about identity. That is a really big problem for Jewish in, in Argentina. For example, our last president, yes, she one day did a tweet when says, our counselor must to choose, if he uh, must remember that before be two, she's, he is an Argentine, okay? At last days at the university, everybody asked me, you are Jew or you are Argentine? I'm an Argentine Jew or you are Argentine, it's the same for me. No, 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 you gotta choose. What are you? You are an Argentine or you are a Jew? I'm, I'm both. And many, many P 
people, like in my situation, tell me the, uh, the same, that people been asking, okay? The president tweet that. A few months uh, later, we have a problem with the holdout, okay? And she say, if you want to know what is the holdout, you must to read the Venetian merchant, okay? Who doesn't read the merchant of Venice, do not know that the bad guys are the Jews, okay? He was comparing the holdout with the Jews in Venetian, okay? So when you're a public person, you get very, really, really delicate when you will tweet, okay? Because it's interest instantly. The, the university organization that is the, the Peronismo, from the Peronismo, uh, at the next day, bring a Palestine uh, flag to the university. And she show us, do you like it? Do you like it? Yes, I like it. I don't care. It's a flag. I, I don't mind. Okay? And they try to, to push you, to push you to you say something. Okay? Just because his leader say, uh, uh, write a tweet or say something on a uh, TV. So we do not have problems about the Shoah. We have more problems about identity or big Jews in Argentina. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think it's really hard speaking about the United States as a whole because every college campus is so incredibly different. I think what we saw in that video absolutely happens and anti-Israel activity on campus and anti-Semitism to some extent is a problem, but also not always to the extent that the media portrays it to be. Um, when you're watching there, you, Berkeley, that's one of the campuses, and in California in general, where there's the most anti-Israel activity, so it's not always accurate to take that as the example that explains every single campus. So I think when you're trying to look at this from America, you actually have to look at each specific campus and ask the questions. What's it like at the University of Maryland? What's it like at Rutgers? What's it like at Berkeley? If you really want to understand what it looks like on campus. Um, I know just speaking from my experience at the University of Maryland, there have been a couple anti-Israel programs, protests, um, but really not many. And we have a much stronger, much more vibrant Jewish life with I think around 6,000 Jewish students on our campus. Um, and it hardly affects the Jewish students on campus. We also happen to have our Students for Justice in the Palestine chapter, which is the organization that's primarily behind pushing forward BDS resolutions on campus. Um, on some campuses, there's a strong blurring of the line between anti-Israel activity and anti-Semitism, and their chapters are more anti-Semitic. Um, on my campus, when there, there was an incident last year where some swastikas were, drone, were drawn on a dorm room, and the leaders of our anti-Israel group reached out to the Jewish community and said, this is awful, are you putting out a statement? We're against your Israel politics, but we think this is awful and want to stand up against these swastikas being drawn. Let us know if there's anything we can do. And again, that's not the norm. I'm by no means saying that that's what all Students for Justice in Palestine chapters would do, but I want to bring up that example because I think it's really important to really look at every different campus when you're trying to understand what it's like in America. Thank you. Um, so just echoing a little of what Liat said, first of all, I think that when, if you're curious about anti-Semitism on campuses, it's important to ask the students themselves and ask more than one student from each campus because they'll tell you different stories. But there's a problem, and I can't speak to other countries, but it's, it's fairly acute in the United States, where people who are not currently um, college students are asked to speak to what it's like on college campuses. And that does a disservice to the Hillels, to the, to the Jewish uh, student organizations and to the Jewish students themselves. Um, there's a lot that we as college students I don't think are, are prepared to speak on at this stage in our lives, but if there's one thing I think we can speak to, it's what's it like to be at college. Um, at Rutgers itself, there's a broad ambivalence about Israel. It, it doesn't necessarily mean you support boycotting Israel, but I think that's a byproduct of just the generation that we've grown up in. Um, for most of our politically aware lives, people who are my age at Rutgers have only known President Obama as their only US president. They've only known Prime Minister Netanyahu as their only Israeli Prime Minister. And regardless of what you think of either and their respective politics, um, a, the fact is that a lot of students find President Obama very popular. And when they see a foreign leader taking him on, um, they side with the US president. That's just where they lean. 
And so that breeds an ambivalence about Israel. It doesn't mean they, they, they like Israel. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong in their opinion, but that just uh, means that people almost don't, don't take Israel seriously. It's almost like a joke with some people um, because of this very public spat. And that's only to the extent also with people who are more politically aware. In terms of the Holocaust, we're very lucky in New Jersey. Um, their public schools have mandatory Holocaust education, um, which you know I can't take for granted. And so people know about the Holocaust. We don't have outright denial. But what we do have an issue with, and I don't think it's just at Rutgers, is Holocaust minimization, or what um, Deborah Lipschak calls soft core denial, which is when people throw around these like flagrant comparisons to the Holocaust and to the Nazis that serve to diminish the meaningfulness of the Holocaust and the, the significance of that experience. And it comes from the anti-Israel side a lot, and that, that's an, an obvious one. They say Israel is acting like the Nazis, Netanyahu is like Hitler, or such and such Israeli official is like Hitler, or you know, the IDF is like the SS, and so on and so forth. Um, and they're the main progenitors of it. But it also comes from the Jewish side um, to some extent. And we need to be careful about how we employ Holocaust imagery, how we employ Holocaust vocabulary, um, especially in the political realm. You know, regardless of what you think of President Obama, when people compared his policies to the Munich Agreement, to, to the, the appeasement of Nazi Germany, and to selling away the <coughs> territories in Europe to, to Nazi Germany, that diminishes the, the significance of the Second World War and of the Holocaust. You know, I believe very strongly in a vibrant discourse about Israel and uh, uh, people sharing their opinions, but we have to be careful about how we uh, use that imagery. Um, and then just the last two points. Uh, we do have a Students for Justice in Palestine. They are very radical on our campus. They are very extremist, and I think that most of what they do, I've been to their events um, to t kind of see what's going on with them, and I think they do really bleed into overt anti-Semitism, and they're so radical that I've even seen them get into Facebook spats with the uh, Princeton Students for Justice in Palestine, who even think they're too radical for them with, with one event that came up. Um, and these are all issues. Um, people throw things at me. I, I had a student ask me, like, haven't you learned anything from, from, from the Holocaust and from, from the historical anti-Semitism when I was talking about Israel? And that was a student who was like a major columnist in our student newspaper. But at the end of the day, those experiences don't define the Jewish student experience at Rutgers. And I, I don't think at a lot of campuses they really define them. They're there. They're there if you look for them. And it's not comfortable. It's not something, you know, it would be better if it wasn't there. But we have a strong Hillel. We're lucky to have a strong Hillel. Um, one of the best answers to this kind of activity is a strong Jewish community institution. And for the most part, you have your day to day. Um, and you need to be able to go to class with students you agree with, students you disagree with, students who like you, students who don't like you, for whatever reason. You need to be able to go about your day and enjoy your college experience. Sure. Um, can you quickly recap what the question was? Just because I feel like we've gone in lots of different directions and I want to speak to exactly what the question is about. The question was if um, those two videos are reflecting a major f problem or it's uh, only a side issue. Okay, so firstly, um, the first video which, which mainly showed situations in the US, um, as Liat said, they represent uh, specific types of schools. And the, what she said about every campus being different in America, that's true everywhere. Every university is different all over the world. And in, as um, Andy said, Andrea said that, um, they, that in some countries they don't have campuses. You know, that's true for a lot of Europe is like that. They don't really have campuses. In the UK, they do. I, I went away from home. I lived on campus. I uh, was involved. I was connected with what was going on in student government. Student government is incredibly powerful. Um, and um, it, it is a big part of what we do. Um, you know, in my university, um, if you want to be elected to the, the electorate, who actually votes in student government elections is 30%. So it was a slightly different percentage than what's going on in Australia. People, people do care, um, and people care a lot because, because the student union movement in the UK has, has a lot of money. 
There's a lot of money in it. And this, the, the, the second video, and I do actually want to give some context to this, was from the National Union of Students annual conference last year. Uh, the National Union of Students is the umbrella movement that supports 600 uh, student unions um, in further education colleges and universities in the UK. Um, and their annual conference is the largest student democratic gathering in the world. There are 800 delegates coming in from 600 different institutions around the UK. Um, it, it's and. NUS owns Ensley Insurance. It's the largest student insurance provider in the UK. Um, most students get their insurance through it. Um, the student union at my university was a five million pound annual budget. Um, it's, it's, they're incredibly powerful. The problem with that video is it did not give the context of what was actually going on. These people are incredibly left-leaning. And the person got up there and she said, she didn't say we shouldn't commemorate the Holocaust. She said we should commemorate all atrocities. And she's an idiot because she didn't read the motion. And the motion actually did. It said specifically that NUS should sign on to Holocaust Memorial Day, the official UK government and parliament um, um, endorsed Holocaust Memorial Day, which does commemorate all mass atrocities, Cambodia, Rwanda, um, etc. cetera. Um, and the person that got up to her afterwards and spoke said, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. And the, and the motion was passed that NUS would sign up to Holocaust Memorial Day by like 99.9%. .9 and the people who probably voted against it probably hadn't read the motion and were voting on partisan politics because the group that put up the motion was the Union of Jewish Students and the Labour Students. Where Labour Students is not like the Labour Party in the UK. It's a Blairite centre-left faction. Um, and they were hard-left people who were just going, we're just going to vote against it because they put it up. Um, and it, and, and it, it's not fair to say that what's going on is actual real Holocaust denial. You know, Holocaust denial is not I think, as Evan said, the soft Holocaust denial, the like, just bad comparisons to Nazi imagery and that sort of stuff, that happens, um, and, it, and it's very worrying. But short of like, leaflets showed up on Australian campuses in Monash and in Glasgow with hollow hoax earlier this year, um, it, which basically had been pulled straight from sort of far right neo-Nazi groups like uh, websites like Stormfront, um, and those are very worrying that they showed up on campus, but it's very unlikely that they were put there by students. It's likely that they were put there by people who aren't students. Um, National Action, which were the group who claimed responsibility for putting up stickers on UK campuses saying Hitler was right, are, um, are mostly um, teenagers running that group. It's a far-right group in the UK. They're being basically prescribed as a terrorist organization now. And they probably have 300 members across the UK. Yeah, Joshua Bonehill's group, and uh, and he's in jail now. The leader of this group, like it's not as in it, the, these people are not are not mainstream, and I, I don't think it's it definitely not representative of the experience of most students. Um, and I think we were discussing earlier, and I said like BDS is a big thing, and students are worried about it on the campuses where BDS is a problem, but it is n Jewish students are not letting BDS define their life on campus. They're not that they they you know. Last week, the Algemeiner put out a list of the, was it 40 or 50, wor 40 worst universities for Jews in America. And like they put NYU and Columbia up in the top 10. Uh, how is that fair? Those universities have incredibly vibrant Jewish life. They have huge Hillels. They have thousands of Jewish students who are in thoroughly enjoying their campus experience. Lots of opportunities to engage with Jewish life. And most of the time, like they're not even they don't even care what's going on with the, with the other stuff more most jewish students are just the truth is this is that the pro palestinian students are political activists that's why when their groups look big it looks scary to us but they're the only ones who care about this issue and we expect jews to be the other side we expect jews to fight them and but the truth is most jewish students are at university to be students they're there to get their degrees they're there to um, enjoy themselves if they're on a campus where that's the the kind of culture uh, and when they leave, um, they leave. <laughs> they're, they're not getting bogged down with this. And we can't expect, I've heard pro-Israel groups and, and, and leaders within the pro-Israel establishment refer to students as the Indians. They should be, we should be the chieftains and telling them what to do and the students should go off and do their work for them. It's, it's never gonna work, okay? Students want to have their degree, get their degrees, wanna have a good time, and they wanna like, just enjoy themselves. And we, we shouldn't be worried about this, it's not, it's not, defining the experience and these things are not representative if it's one protest like this once every two years on one campus or like you know 
Last year, what was it? The Israel and Campus Coalition said in, the, in America said that there were more uh, anti-Israel events than there had ever been before, but there were also more pro-Israel events than there had ever been before, and more certainly more pro-Israel events than anti-Israel events on campus. You know, so we can keep watching videos like this, but they're the only times when the cameras come out, especially in the Jewish community. And the only time we hear about any, any, anything is when there's a BDS motion. We never actually hear about stuff when there's pro-Israel stuff going on, and that's much, much, much more common and much, much more uh, prevalent and much more defining of the campus experience of most Jewish students. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Um, I have a lot to say. Uh, I'll try to keep it very short because I know you're short on time. Um, I would like to, uh, well, before I forget, um, this Joshua Bonhill guy in this organization, what was his name? Uh, National Action. National Action. Uh, we actually took down their uh, social media accounts. Um, and he was very upset with that before he went, we went to jail. He got a, a Twitter fight with me. And he said, uh, eventually I said, what do you want? And he said, I, I think we need another Shoah. It's another Holocaust. The guy is a Holocaust denier. <laughs> and I took a print screen of this. Of course, of course. No idea who he is. No, but other than the fact that he's the guy that trolled Luciana Berger, who's a Jewish MP online, and that he's now in jail. Yeah, but it, that connects to you know that Jewish students come to study, and they're just you know they're just here, there for being political activists for fun. Uh, they like it. <laughs> a Holocaust denier that said you need another Holocaust. So the Holocaust happened or didn't? They took a print screen of it. It was very viral. It was very funny um, to make fun of him. Um, this is part of the solutions, maybe. Um, but. Um, I would like to tell you a story. Um, when I was uh, with uh, What Israel, and we had a joint activity on French campus, it was the whole week. Um, and I can say, well, it was kind of, uh, um, uh, it blew my mind in a, in a way. I mean, I've, I've, I've been dealing with those people for a few years now, offline and online, but still, um, uh, it was a mind-blowing uh, experience. Uh, maybe I should start with uh, the South African delegation that we had, because when we got to Wits University, for example, they had um, our faces photos uh, plastered all around campus, saying these are soldiers, people saying people, these are Mossad agents, don't speak with them, um, and so on, and they had like walks all around us to intimidate us or intimidate students to speak with those filthy Israelis. Um, in France, um, so that was, that was that. In France, I uh, um, had one very uh, uh, unbelievable experience that I have to share with you. Uh, we went to Dauphine University. I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's a very famous one. Anyone here from France, by the way? Anyone? Yes, two? So Dauphine University is very famous. Um, French, uh, many French industrialists and businessmen went there and so on. And there is a, 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 the UEJF, the French Union of Jewish Students. They have a room there uh, for their activities. But when I walked there, and we, we had our own activity with them, uh, with the uh, guys of the UJF, I uh, realized that this is not an activity room for, for fun. This is a sanctuary because what I saw was, I mean, and when I'm speaking now about it, I'm, I'm angry when I'm speaking about it because it's so upsetting. Um, Jewish students come uh, inside, it was lunchtime. They uh, take the kippahs off the, from their uh, uh, pockets, put it on, uh, take their tzitzit off from the, because they don't want people to see they're Jewish, uh, with their sandwiches or lunch or whatever, saying the prayer, eating very fast, saying Birkat HaMazor, and then rush to the next class um, while taking uh, the uh, kippah off and uh, pushing their uh, tzitzit inside their pants uh, and looking left and right when they uh, uh, go through the door because uh, uh, they don't want someone to see that they left this room. By the way, the room has no sign on it, of course. Uh, it's just an ordinary room because they don't want to. Know, don't, they don't want others to know that this room uh, is uh, occupied by the uh, Union of Jewish Students. 
Um, and this is one thing. On Friday, uh, well, we went also to Lyon uh, 2. In Lyon 2, I went to the bathroom. We had an activity there. It was okay. Uh, on the bathroom, I go there and I see uh, writings on the walls, uh, Forisson, Arason. Robert Forisson was right. Forisson is a Holocaust denier. Um, in the bathroom. So this is uh, one thing. I, uh, again, I don't think that uh, um, in Dauphine University or in, uh, 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 in Lyon, it was uh, a cause of uh, neo-Nazi activity. It's not. It's BDS. Uh, or the cause of or the outcomes of BDS activity. That's more, uh, uh, that's more like it. Um, and in uh, Paris 8, and if you're Jewish and you're French, you probably heard about it. Uh, because I took the video. Um, that was a very violent uh, act toward us, uh, our delegation, uh, pushing us, pushing us away from the university, blocking the entrance of the university. People threatening me. It's, by the way, it's on tape. It's better than your videos, by the way. I have to say. Um, I made fun of it uh, with them. Uh, this, they just they wanted me. They demanded to delete the photos immediately. I said, why? I'm a photographer. This is my uh, uh, this is my art. You're suppressing my uh, artistic uh, 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 my artistic uh, views. They were very angry about it. Um, but then um, pushing us away from the university um, and shouting, uh, uh, Zionists are not welcome in this university, and and so on. Uh, then the uh, um, the dean of the university wanted us to come to a meeting because she felt very, uh, because we had an arrangement and so on, and uh, it was completely ruined, um, but we could not get inside the university because they blocked the entrance of the university for the Zionists not to get in. Um, and she said, okay, maybe you should go from the back, from the back door. Uh, and of course we uh, refused. Um, uh, my answer was uh, that in Israeli universities, it doesn't matter who you are, um, you come uh, straight from the front gate. You come inside, no matter your ethnicity, your religion, your gender, or sex. Um, uh, so we didn't go to the meeting. I don't know what she wanted to say. But this is uh, Paris 8 in Saint-Denis, uh, north of uh, Paris. Um, the BDS will not succeed in boycotting Israel. Maybe minor. Uh, um, winnings, but they won't be succeeding. But what they want to create is an environment of boycott, an environment of incitement. And this environment is toxic for Jewish life on campus. This is what we should be worried about. Not about the boycotts and some other stuff. This is the environment, people afraid speaking out. Uh, students being afraid to go on campus during the Israeli apartheid week because they just don't, don't want to see it or deal with it. Because, they, they, because the others, the SJP and so on, they know they're Jewish. So why bother? This is, uh, by the way, I uh, heard it from students themselves uh, in a, a, a Swarthmore University uh, near Philadelphia after they wanted a, a secret meeting because my face looked Israeli, so they didn't want uh, uh, other students to see that they're meeting with an Israeli, so we had a secret meeting on campus. It's unbelievable, unbelievable stories that I'm hearing from uh, all around the world because I'm working with Jewish communities, I'm working with student organizations, um, and students come to us, to ISCA, as for help uh, sometimes. About the Holocaust, uh, uh, the Holocaust, grading the Holocaust question. Um, it's not their invention, by the way. Um, that there are many holocausts, not one holocaust. It's uh, also appeared in the resolution they tried to pass uh, in the Durban uh, conference in 2011. Uh, there's no one holocaust. This is the actual uh, um, sentence. There's no one holocaust. There are many <coughs> genocides, and uh, it should not be unique. Of course, uh, it has its anti-Semitic uh, uh, tendencies. Um, this is, by the way, also this um, policy uh, pushing this kind of narrative is uh, the official state policy of uh, Iran, by the way, which is, which is 
by the way, the only um, country today in the world that uh, official state policy is anti-Semitism. This is one of their uh, policies towards Israel, towards uh, the Jewish people. In the University of Ryerson, by the way, in, uh, only, uh, only in this November, they try to have the Jewish uh, uh, organizations uh, on campus try to pass a motion uh, for a, a Holocaust education week. Uh, SJP was against it because, again, there's no one Holocaust, there are many genocides and more Holocaust. And when they had a meeting and they uh, knew that this resolution, the Jewish resolution is going to pass, the right resolution is going to pass, they just walked out. They had a walkout uh, publicly to uh, uh, show their uh, inconsent of, uh, uh, of this uh, notion. Um, and the Muslim presidents of the student union afterwards passed the motion through the student council oh, and, aware of that. and celebrated it. And celebrated uh -huh. that they would be now commemorating Holocaust Education Week at Ryerson University. So it's important to give the full part of that story. Yes. That it's, it's, it's not, and yeah. Just uh, last point. Uh, all this rhetoric, and this is, this is my job, uh, comes from the internet. And uh, uh, you should be aware of that, that this rhetoric is being pushed by a lot of activists um, uh, online. Um, there, is a, there is one, because I'm on tape, I won't be mentioning his name because then he will think he's someone special. Um, but for example, he had a, like a, a memory. It was during, uh, it was tweeting it during our day after uh, the, um, it was after the um, terror attack uh, at the Brussels uh, uh, Jewish Museum. And uh, he was uh, uh, tweeting a memory from his childhood when he was with his parents um, in Brussels, living in Brussels. And he remember then when the uh, next door synagogue was firebombed. They threw Molotov uh, cocktails at the synagogue tried to burn it down. Uh, um, and then he says, well, it was um, during, uh, it was, uh, during uh, the Sabra and the Shatila uh, incident. Um, now, this is anti-Semitism. But most of the people won't see it as anti-Semitic because this message has a few layers. What, it's, what he wanted to say, but he couldn't because it's not politically correct. Hey, Jews in Europe or elsewhere, when something is happening in Israel, you should beware, because you're in danger. If anything is going wrong in the Middle East, you're in danger. And this is the message. And this is layers of messages being used by those BDS activists. It doesn't, it doesn't appear as anti-Semitism at first hand, but you need to dig it up a bit. Anti-Semitism uh, is not what it looks like today as it was uh, uh, 10 years or even 15 years ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in a way, in a way, uh, you already answered to the second question, and time is uh, running out very, very quickly. So I, I will let, uh, I will give time now for for questions. So uh, please, you wanted to uh, but, uh, microphone first. <coughs> I said thank you for being student leaders on campus, being that we're high school uh, people, leaders here, um, educators. Um, what do you suggest we do to help prepare our students for this kind of experience? I have students who've come from they're on NYU, Columbia. I've invited them back to the school to help facilitate groups. But this is something that's new when you kind of are in the forefront. So what can we do as educators to help our students prepare? So, um, yes. Let, let's start with, uh, with Dean and then <coughs> with Katsin. Yeah, thanks for your question. I think um, the most powerful thing we can do for young people uh, is to teach them uh, about long-term solutions um, towards combating anti-Semitism. Um, what we've heard of some of today is um, some of the more, or we've touched on today, are some of the more short-term solutions. Um, taking posters down, taking tweets down, 
um, stopping protests that are going on. But that, but really, and, and, and to be honest with you, in Australia, we're, we're pretty good at that. Um, we're actually even better at that. What we do is we use our leverage, we use our connections in government and media to make sure that people who have those sorts of views don't even get into those positions of, that they can do that. So, but, but I think what we have to start doing from a younger age um, is is teaching relationship building with multi, multi-faith um, uh, relationship building uh, and building friendships across um, a, a, across communities um, because ultimately the most powerful and effective way to combat anti-Semitism, and I've seen this um, over a number of years now, has been to have face-to-face um, friendships and communication with people from um, different faith groups because ultimately um, no one's going to harbour uh, negative views or resent, uh, resentment towards uh, any of us if they know us personally. And so it's, you know, I think it's all going well that, you know, we, we can have these ways to, to these short-term fixes um, for anti-Semitism, taking down t- tweets, taking down posters, but ultimately from a young age, and I was part of a program um, through high school called Building Bridges, where we used to go visit Muslim schools, Christian schools, and built some great friendships out of that. And uh, I can tell you that some of those people did have their um, perceptions and cautions about Jews, as I probably did in my ignorance about their faith. And through these relationships uh, and the coffees that I've had with them uh, and the phone calls I've had with them over the years, uh, we've just deconstructed and completely diminished those barriers that um, are the building blocks towards anti-Semitism. I think if we can teach that through high school, um, I think that's definitely the most powerful tool. Thank you. Uh, Evan, please. Um, So... A few things. I think that the experience that students are going to have in college starts at home. I think that what the students see at home before they come to school is very important. And the values that um, you know, the, the discussions and the values that the parents are passing on to the children really matters a lot. Um, I think that you need that we need to have very strong Holocaust education because that um, not only gives students a, a perspective on where we're coming from in, in the <laughs> relatively recent past. But it also disincentivizes um, that soft core denial, the, the, the inappropriate comparisons, um, because it emphasizes the seriousness and the significance of the Holocaust. Um, it also uh, begets having better Israel education and more nuanced Israel education. Um, and that's very important, because there are lines that are passed around in Jewish Israel education in the United States. I can't, I can't speak for the other countries. But in, in my own Jewish education, there are lines and there are theories that are passed around that just don't fly outside of the Jewish community and really don't pass academic muster themselves either. People will say, why, why can you boycott Israel? Your, your computer chip was made in Israel. Everyone's heard that. The BDS people have heard that. There's, even also, there's also a new line that they talk about um, the situation in the West Bank. And it's like, is it occupation or is, is, are the territories disputed? It's also kind of a losing battle. You, you, you have the, you're up against the United States government and the Israeli Supreme Court on that one. And it's just not worth it. What would be better is to wean people onto Israel and to give them an appreciation of Zionism because the fight isn't going to be whether your computer chip was made in Israel or um, whether it's appropriate to Call the call call the occupied territories. The fight is going to be whether Zionism and the idea of a Jewish state is justifiable, which of course it is. But that's that's really going to be the discussion, um, you, and it needs to uh, be passed on that there are also you know a healthy skepticism about anti-Semitism because you also see students, especially on the far left. I see a lot of American Jewish students who are very tolerant of anti-Semitism, especially on the left, who almost subordinate. Um, concerns about anti-Semitism to, well, you know, there's a lot of Islamophobia, which there is, and it's a big issue, including within the Jewish community. But they'll say, oh, there's a lot of Islamophobia, so we'll tolerate Muslim anti-Semitism. Or they're not really anti-Semitic, or we don't really understand them. But, you know, you should call a spade a spade, and when you see anti-Semitism, you should call it. Um, and, and lastly, to, but on the other side of that healthy skepticism, um, stop this environment of, of fear-mongering, because it's not healthy. It's not healthy for students. You know, all of us on this panel are very politically involved, but the fact is most students at college, most Jewish students aren't necessarily very politically involved, and they should have good values, and they should have a good background, but they're not going to be the foot soldiers um, in the war for Israel, in the war for Zionism. 
Um, and there are lists in the United States. There's the AMCA initiative, which is like a list of, of anti-Israel professors, and the Canary Mission, which is this website that outlines uh, anti-Israel students. And that gets people really hyped up. It got me hyped up as a freshman. Um, there was the big anti-Israel activist on our campus who had done a really and said a lot of vitriolic things. And I don't want to diminish that. Um, but one day, I ran into her at the bus stop. And um, it turned out we had gone to the same high school. And she saw my sweatshirt. And she read the name off of it. And I looked up. And I, the thing that popped into my head was um, one of the Indiana Jones movies where he accidentally bumps into Hitler when he goes to Germany. And I shouldn't have felt that way. Because she had done and said a lot of vitriolic and anti-Semitic things, but you shouldn't be afraid of other students on your campus. And that's not to diminish that there have been physical incidents. They're rare, but there have been. But by and large, you shouldn't be afraid like that. What and that's the organizations you mentioned, AMCA and what else? The Canary Mission. Canary. Canary. canary like mission. the bird, Canary. Yeah. Website thing. And so, and the other. Th Stupid the the thing is that also is you know, internet incitement is real and it, we should be worried about it. But also don't look for problems. You know, when you look on the internet, you're asking for trouble. There's a saying like when you write an article, don't read the comment section. <laughs> when, you look, when you look in Twitter, a lot of these people, and again, it's not to diminish the danger of it, but you have to balance who's just a social misfit, who's, who's just posting nonsense on the internet, and who is actually a danger. And if you go looking through Twitter and you go digging through Twitter, you will find really nasty stuff. You will find really stupid stuff. And 95% of those people aren't an actual physical threat. There are people who are. And again, you, it, but, but when you have this environment of fear and you have this environment of sensationalism, it makes it difficult for Jewish students to parse what is legitimate criticism of the state of Israel, what is just political discussion, and what is actual anti-Semitic um, criticism of Israel, which there is a lot of, what is actual just classical anti-Semitism. But it becomes very difficult for people to parse that, and they become isolated and they, they're, um, they, they, they get very visceral reactions when they interact with criticism of Israel for the first time or they interact with real anti-Semitism for the first time. And those people then either tend to veer to the far right and they don't want to hear it from everyone, anyone else because everyone hates the Jews or they veer to the far left because um, they were shown Israel for the first time and it wasn't what they thought it would be and now they think they were lied to and they have to hate Israel now. And the, it's just not a healthy way to raise it. Thank you. We'll take Andrea and then Ido, and hopefully we'll take another question. <laughs> oh, maybe you prefer another question? Or? No, For, please, if okay. you wanted to relate. Um, I'm teacher in high school. I'm teaching Haim Nachman Bialik School at Rosario. Here is the director that <laughs> with us. And I think it's two really important things that we must to teach to the kids. First of all, they do not have a fray to talk about Israel or about they are Jew, okay? Many times, kids uh, believe, no, not, I'm sorry, uh, kids uh, feel afraid or ashamed to talk about uh, Judaism or if I defend Israel, people be, uh, will be in front of me. I can tell you that my kids of my school, I completely prepare to give any discussion about Israel or about Judaism. A good, a good discussion, not about uh, screaming or saying bad things with really good arguments and giving a position, a, a good position, okay? No, uh, we must to kill all the Palestines and that horrible thing that you maybe can hear. And I think this is very, very important. Do not be afraid or ashamed to be Jews or Zionists. And the second one is involve the students, okay? Since they're in high school, they must be involved in different projects. For example, in Rosario, we have the Shoah exposition, okay? With the two uh, last years of the high school, we uh, take the kids, they have many uh, uh, learnings about Shoah, okay? But it's not only about Shoah, it's about values too, okay? Um, collectivity, memory, about what's happening in Argentina, what's happening in Germany with the Jews, in Poland, what's happening with Armenians, Okay, we must to teach them that, okay, we are special, okay, we are shoes, but somebody else has the same problem that us. Don't, don't be the kids unique, okay? Let's share another's experiences, and we, we must do uh, that they be strongest, okay? 
they got to be uh, free to, to say what they think, what they believe. And we are going to, to have great kids that could defend Israel, defend the Judaism, but not in a, in a hard position, in an open mind position. Thank you. Ido, please, and then, yes. Yes, please, can Everybody wants to express themselves on the, on the question, so <laughs> we'll finish with this question because our time is already already done. But, but please, no, I will, Ido, I will, I will Liat, do it, and uh, do Yosef. It very quick. Um, I think we should start with introducing the definitions. I, I saw Cheryl here. Cheryl, oh, Cheryl is here. I participated in a, a program called the Echoes and Reflections of uh, the International School. Uh, um, here and uh, with uh, which uh, organization in the U.S. With the ADL and the with the yes, exactly. Sorry, um, and it was a webinar with uh, educators from the United States, and I think most of them were not aware of the working definition of anti-Semitism. If I, if I, it was, I found it very, sh I found it shocking. Um, it's a very good definition. It's very short. It gives you examples for everyday life anti-Semitism, how to distinguish between uh, anti-Israel sentiment or anti-Semitic anti sentiment and so on. It's very good. Uh, maybe, tr uh, maybe start with uh, educating and endorsing in, uh, no, well, uh, the United Kingdom just endorsed uh, um, the uh, uh, working definition of anti-Semitism, IRA. Uh, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance did it uh, uh, this year um, after the EU ditched it, but this is for another discussion. Um, more organizations should do it. Endorse this definition of anti-Semitism. It's very good. It gives you tools. It's not an academic uh, out of nowhere. It, give, it, gi it gives you tools to identify anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment and new anti-Semitism. So this is, this is one thing. Um, very short. Very shortly. Um, second, um, well, look, the, the, uh, the video I told you about from France, uh, we posted it online, uh, almost half million views there. I was physically attacked. I wasn't that, I'm, I'm a big guy. I wasn't that physically attacked, just pushed me. But I did a big thing out of it. Actually, I used their own tools because they do it the same. And everybody in France talked about it. All the major newspapers. And we, uh, it's been two years and a half now, and we haven't heard from the BDS France until today. They're very ashamed because they act violently because we caught them on tape. We should do more of this and involve students with it. And lastly, um, people said it, and uh, uh, I'm a bit biased, uh, make more of uh, ISCA. Um, I can tell you that my students come from different religions and different uh, spheres. Um, it really connects to the uh, uh, interfaith dialogue. Uh, hate connects people, by the way, and it connects my students. Uh, they're fighting together for a cause, whether it's anti-Semitism or Islamophobia, it's the same thing. Um, should do more programs involving students. Uh, uh, in this issue. Thank you. Liat and, and then Yosef, you will finish. Thank you. Try to be quick. Um, I think one of the best things, having gone through Jewish education growing up, that educators can do to prepare students for college campus is actually at age appropriate levels have challenging conversations about Israel with students. Um, I remember one of, at the first, my first year on college campus, we had this huge pro Israel fair called Israel Fest that we have every single year, and I was tabling. And a student walked up to our table dressed with a Palestinian flag. And she said to us, like, my family's in Gaza. I can't go see them. We tried and we were turned away at the airport. I will never see my family again. And then she continued to say many political things that I disagree with about Israel not shouldn't exist. And it's only oppressing Palestinians. And it's only bad. And there's no good. But I remember in that moment feeling like, I don't know what to say to her. Because I actually don't know enough about transportation. 
and the issues with that. And if I had known what to say, luckily my friend was there and was able to have a good conversation with her that started by, I'm so sorry you can't see your family, and then continued into a conversation about why he disagrees with her politics. But if we're actually talking about the substance to students at age appropriate levels, then you could have the conversations where you say to people who you really disagree with, who are anti-Israel, here are a couple things that you're saying that I think are legitimate that are problems, but now listen to me and let me explain to you why Israel is not apartheid, why Israel needs to exist as a Jewish and democratic state, and why I think a lot of what you're saying is incorrect, and we're not able to do that if we don't actually have the substance of the conflict to back it up on campus. Thank you. Okay, um, I want to speak directly to your point about what you can do. The one thing that every single one of you should be taking away and making sure your students know is that the BDS movement is not an anti-Israel movement, okay? That is a fundamental thing, and I'll repeat that. The BDS movement is not an anti-Israel movement. The BDS movement is an anti-Zionist movement, okay? It doesn't matter how many times you tell someone who doesn't like Israel about cherry tomatoes, mobile phones, and there's, there's moral Israeli army, they don't care. Okay, their issue is with the fact that there, ex there exists a Jewish state. They disagree with nationalism in general. If they come from the far left, they, they, they disagree with interventionism. They don't like Israel as a concept, not Israel as, an, as, as what it is. Okay, they don't mind. Like, and, 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 and in general, like, that, that is the problem, okay? And it doesn't matter about all the people online because those people, most students, don't care. Okay, most students are not on Twitter anymore. Okay, like Twitter is going down the pan. Nobody, nobody cares. Okay, Facebook is are the main people that are on Twitter, and I'm on Twitter, and I have over a thousand followers, and I like it a lot, and I like to tweet. Okay, but I know that I'm in the minority. Okay, and I know that the people who are on Twitter tend to be the elites. They tend to be the journalists. They tend to be the politicians. They tend to be people who like the sound of their own voice, like me. Um, and um, and and be honest, we don't matter. We don't matter, most students don't matter, don't care about us, okay? What you need to be telling your students is that you need to be firstly teaching them, if you want them to have a healthy relationship with Israel, that you need to be teaching them about Zionism, okay? And that you need to make sure that they understand a nuanced understanding of what Zionism is, because I think most people who even affiliate themselves to a pro-Israel group on campus couldn't tell you the difference between Jabotinsky Zionism and the Zionism of Khadam or Martin Buber. They, would, they wouldn't know, they, they, they have no idea. They, they can tell you about the maps, and they can tell you where Israel is, and they can tell you that Israel created the Jaffa orange or cherry tomato, but they, they don't know anything about Israel. And we also keep having perpetuate. In the last 15 years, we have replaced substantive Israel education within youth spaces with Israel advocacy. Okay, it doesn't work. We cannot per perpetuate a culture which says, stand with us and not against us. And sorry, I didn't mention a specific organization. You cannot perpetuate that culture. It doesn't work because you create a false dichotomy that it's either or. You can't be both pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian. If I, I believe in the self-determination of the Jewish people, and that is why I made Aliyah to this country, and I see, my, I, and I, and I see myself as building this country, but because I believe in the self-determination of my people, I cannot deny the self-determination of another people. It, it would be totally illogical. It, totally illogical. You know, and it, and, I, and it doesn't matter to me that nobody talked about a Palestinian people before 1959. It doesn't matter to me because nobody talked about a Kosovan people, people before like 25 years ago. I'm not going to turn around to him and say, you're not really Kosovan, you're really an Austro-Hungarian. Like, what are you talking about? Like, there are a group of people who call themselves Palestinian. They've got three generations of national history, myth, culture, heritage, and they call themselves a Palestinian and they say that this land is theirs. Who am I to deny that? Okay, I have to grapple with it. As a young Jew and a young Zionist, I have to grapple with that. Yes, okay, you, but that's, you said short. That, okay, <laughs> that's the culture. Yeah, I'm sorry, I sorry. need to say certain things. They, you, that, that is the culture you need to teach your young people that you're working with. You need to teach them nuance, that this place is complicated, that it's not all blue and white and bright and everything's wonderful here. It's not. Okay, and, uh, and if anybody wants to have a follow-up conversation with me, I'll hang around, and I'm really happy to have these conversations because they're very, very, very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all your insights, and you can see, you can have here the complexity in this panel uh, displayed for uh, our next generations. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.